A reminder of how all this began on October 7th. Hamas gunmen storming across the border from Gaza, hunting Israelis to kill or capture. Around 240 were taken hostage. Among them, Cherie Bibas, trying to shield her two little boys from the horror all around them. Ten-month-old Kafir had just started crawling. Ariel, who's four, loves climbing and Batman. Now they and their mother are expected home in the coming days, along with dozens of other women and children. They don't know yet that Hamas killed their grandparents. Shiri's cousin, Ifat, is caught between hope and torment. I don't know what kind of children will come back to us. The trauma, what they saw. And until I see them in my own eyes, I don't believe any list of names and I don't believe any news coming today from anywhere. I need to see them in my own eyes. I need to hold my cousin in my arms. But for many in Gaza, just the anguish of goodbye. Hassan Halusa lost his niece, three brothers and his grandmother. Relatives say they were killed by an Israeli airstrike on a residential building. If and when the ceasefire comes, it will be too late for Hassan's family. Gaza is teeming with grief and desperation. This was the struggle for a few bottles of water. The truce will clear a path for hundreds of trucks carrying food, fuel and medical supplies. For now, Gaza keeps burying its dead, with more than a hundred bodies in this mass grave. The next few days may bring quiet, but Israel and Hamas have said that after the truce, the war will resume. Orlegiran, BBC News, Tel Aviv.